Hello, my name's Hans and today at Rumba Brothers we're going to be fitting some brake pads and brake discs to a Triumph Mark II Spitfire 1965. First job is to slacken the wheel nuts before we jack it up. So I've got a little tool I've made up, it might be one in your jacking kit. Gently prise the hub cap off. That avoids scratching the paint. I'm just using a, a rather large breaker bar because it's the only one I've got. We're going to crack all four wheel nuts off. After we've done this we can then jack the vehicle up. Okay we've now raised the uh, car up with a jack. We can now spin off the wheel nuts. First of all we need to remove the brake pads. These are held in by two metal rods and there's a couple of small pins. As you can see I've pulled them out neatly with a small pair of pliers. Remove both pins and we need to push them out. These are quite loose but it's, um, you might need to drift them out with a punch and a hammer. But these should come out and then we can, using another pair of grips we can just Squeeze the pistons back into the calipers. Do them evenly. Also make a note of your brake fluid level because if it's fully topped up when you push the pistons back it will overflow and make a mess from the master cylinder. Now we can withdraw each of the pads. Okay pads are removed we need to remove these two caliper bolts. They're both 5 8 imperial. Carefully remove the two bolts and slowly pull the caliper off. Be careful not to strain the hose. So I'm going to use a, a hanging clip and support it like so. Now the caliper's out of the way we can remove the hub and the uh, disc combination. I'm using a pair of pipe grips and we're going to try and pull the grease cap off. Yep that's off. Now we can remove the split pin and the castellated nut. And carefully A whole lot should come off in one piece. Put the bearing aside, make sure you don't get any grit or any dirt into it. Before we do any work on the discs I'll put some uh, towel into where the bearing goes both sides to keep any dirt out. I've also put the four nuts back on the threads to protect any damage and I'm using a nice bit of carpet mat to actually work on. These nuts are very tight and probably corroded in a bit we could use a windy gun to get them off but I'm going to do it by hand and to stop it from turning I found a block of wood I'm going to insert that in there and then holding the piece of wood I'm going to no, that, one's... that one's tight Now we've cracked them off we can loosen them off. We've got two of these bolts out, just the other two to take out. Once we have all the bolts out we need to remove the hub from the disc. It's probably corroded on quite well 
The important thing is not to hit the hub, but um, we can tap the disc and try and hold the hub, and hopefully it'll come off. The important thing is not to damage the hub. We're going to replace the disc. It's scrap. As you can see, it's slowly moving, and off it comes. We need to clean up all this uh, surface area. I'm using a hand wire brush. We just need to go around until it's all nicely de-rusted. Before I go any further, I'd just like to explain that this car has a Type 14 caliper fitted, and if I hold up a Type 12 and put them both together, you can see the difference. The pads are different, and also the uh, suspension kingpin is different as well. So uh, make sure you get the right pads for the right calipers. I've actually found a couple of second-hand uh, right-hand side kingpins. This is the Type 12, and as you can see, those are the two caliper bolt holes, and this is the Type 14, and those are the caliper bolt holes, and they are totally different, so you need to change this part if you're changing, upgrading the calipers. When fitting new discs and pads, you may have the option of either fitting the standard size and with the standard pads, or you might think of upgrading to a high performance disc and pad set. Here we have, as an example, this is for a TR6, a Rossini disc, which has got drillings and grooves in it, and it's made from a higher carbon and manganese content with molybdenum, and gives you far better braking. And you have the choice of either using the green EBC pads or standard brake pads. Here we can see the difference between the old disc and the reason we've replaced it is because it's badly grooved. The new disc, lovely and flat, and on the other side of this one, this is how it should be on both sides if it's been on for a number of years. The pad that came off it is badly grooved, and this one's nice and flat. Whatever you do, don't fit a new disc and reuse the old pads. These have got plenty of life left to them, but we can't use them again. We need to throw them away and fit new pads. If we get a disc and pads that have a special coating on the back, that's an anti-squeal coating and we'll leave that on. But if we have these shims, we shouldn't use these shims on these sorts of pad. If we have a different sort of pad that is nice and flat, that's the reason we use these shims. As you can see, we've cleaned up the hub surface that we're going to mount the disc to. All nice and clean, and we have the new disc, and we'll make sure that this surface, it's got no grit on it, it's all been degreased, and we lower it over the top, just slide it around a few times to locate the bolt holes, and we're going to use new nuts, oh sorry, new bolts, and washers, and these are tied up to 35 pounds per foot. Now using our bit of wood, place underneath and we can use the torque wrench that we preset to 35 Tighten up each bolt till it uh, clicks Always do them diagonally As you can see, we've removed our bit of paper towel that was keeping all the dirt out of the bearing. We're now going to degrease the disc. I'm using some brake cleaner. And we just go all the way around, make sure it's all nicely degreased. Once we've done that, we can just put a bit of grease in the bearing. I'm going to Once we've done that, 
we can slide it onto the hub. Refit the small little bearing. Replace the nut and then we'll have to just make sure the adjustment is right before putting in the split pin. Just need to fit a new split pin now. Okay, to adjust the wheel bearing, we just nip it up and see where it lines up with the holes it runs through. I've tightened that up, but it uh, need backing off just to get to the next hole. We don't want to over tighten it, so I've just backed it off slightly. Now we can bend over the split pin. Make sure it's all nicely tucked in and put some fresh grease in the cap. Gently tap it into position. Okay, now we have the disc fitted, we need to refit the caliper. Just remove its hanging racket, keeping it supported, you don't want to strain the hose. Carefully position it over the disc. It's a little bit fiddly because of the heat shield and then we're using new bolts on this one. Always put in bolts by finger tight. Make sure you don't cross thread anything. Then when you're happy they've gone in we can use a ratchet. Okay, now we've just tightened the bolts up loosely, we need to torque them. I'll set the torque wrench to between 50 and 55 pounds per foot. That's the top one done. That's the bottom one done. We can now install the pads. So we have the new brake pads and the anti-squeal shims. We're going to use a little bit of copper slip just on the outside edge. And then a little dab on there just to hold it. Do the same with the other one. Careful not to get any of this on the actual material itself. These have little little arrows which show that they should point upwards. So this is going to be the left hand one and I'm now going to slot it into the caliper. Same with the inside one. See, make sure it's nice and clean, no copper slip on there. And then we can insert these pins from the inside. And then we insert these little pins into the hole. You might have to turn the pin round so that they line up. That's the bottom one in. I'm just going to pull this out and reinsert it. That's it. Make sure you press the brake pedal once you've finished this and it will push the pads out and so the first time you drive down the road you haven't uh, you have got a full brake pedal. Just need now is to straighten it all up and fit the wheel. We've refitted the wheel, tightened up the wheel nuts gently and then we've lowered the jack and now we need to torque them up to 42 pounds per foot.
replace the hubcap and do the same on the other side.